Hello, and welcome to this video on the genetic and proteomic mechanisms behind low-functioning autism. There is a strong core of the public which believes that autism is caused by vaccines, among other modern evils. They are wrong. This video builds on one of the earliest videos published on this channel, and explains the genes involved with low-functioning autism, the proteins that are changed, and what effect it has. A link to that video is in the description box below. Autism, no matter where it is placed on the spectrum, is caused by an array of genetic mutations, nearly always more than one, and in a very complicated manner of interactions. These mutations are increasingly understood and put into the appropriate context. The simplest description of autism is this characterization, an impairment in social skills, the use of nonverbal communication skills and verbal communication skills in an inappropriate or ineffective manner, restricted and repetitive behaviours, and the risk factors for autism being largely inherited with a greater than 90% probability. Low-functioning autism is distinct from the other arms of the autism spectrum, as it is defined by greater impaired social interaction, restricted communication, and repetitive behaviour. Low-functioning autism is more impaired in the social interaction arm than in other forms of autism, and is often associated with secondary conditions. To quote the work of Minshu and company in 2007, the evidence supports autism as a disorder of the association cortex, both its neurons and their projections. In particular, it is a disorder of connectivity, which appears from current evidence to primarily involve intrahemispheric connectivity. End quote. Autism is characterized by abnormalities in particularly complex behavior whether that is language or cognition. Mental retardation can occur in up to 70% of cases. A further 30% of cases can be complicated by seizures. But this comes with the absence of any other neurological issues, such as blindness, deafness, or long-term inability or cognitive problems. In between 90-95% to of the autistic population, this does not cause any further brain dysfunction other than that observed in autism. One of the simplest and probably the first signs of a genetic and non-environmental factor is this work by Peters and company in 2013. The gist being that there is a clear communication problem and bias in the autistic brain. The research design even isolated the problem of autism and possible confacting variables like another disorder. Autism renders an excessively degenerate network of local and interconnecting neurons, and this decreases function. Not only does it decrease function, but it decreases the specialization. This has an adverse effect on the specialization and the efficacy of neurons over a very short and long distance. The intermediate distances, however, were not affected. This led to a coherence problem. Yet another gene that was found to be associated with low-functioning autism in particular was called Shank2. Shank2 was found to be particularly important where there was a de novo mutation or a deletion. This could also be inherited. The sites and type of mutation that occurred were often associated with psychiatric disorders, and in the case of parents, this would mean the probability of a child inheriting the genes necessary for autism were significantly higher where they were diagnosed with problems. In this case, there were two subjects that had receptors that were duplicated. This led to an issue with the number of copies of the gene, and either dysfunctional or excessively functional. The overall findings of this study strengthened the argument that it was the role of synapses which led to the occurrence of autism and the differentiation in autism types. It did also highlight the issue of multiplicative effect of mutations in genes and how it required a number of different mutations for autism to be diagnosed. The next category that was particularly important for low-functioning autism is that of autoimmunity. And this had to do with natural killer cells and natural killer cell receptors. In autistic patients, the molecules that activated natural killer cells were significantly upregulated. Natural killer cells are used to maintain the cells from turning either cancerous or being responsible for immune things, more specifically immunity to self. 
which means the immune system does not attack itself, and the body does not train the immune system to attack itself. Through the use of a number of different measures, natural killer cells demonstrated an increased production of certain immune products. These had to do with enzymes that broke down cells and activated more immune responses. This is more important when this was occurring under normal resting conditions, without any stresses in the environment or being applied. In children with autism, this means that they have a far higher risk of developing both autoimmune and other immune diseases. Natural killer cells are an important part of the immune system during early fetal growth and growth of the brain during early childhood. They are involved with killing off cells that are either no longer required or not performing as they are meant to. As has been shown in previous videos, autistic children have a far higher neural growth at one point in their life and then it is suddenly retarded. As a consequence, there is inappropriate synaptic growth and development. It is suspected that this autoimmune issue may be at least partially responsible for the inappropriate growth of these synapses. The next category that is particularly important for low functioning is cerebellar volume. Cerebellar and cerebral white matter volumes can vary in size and distinguish up to 95% of autistic children when they are only toddlers. This diagnosis of autism from normal controls can be used where it is comparing the size of the brain at the same age to a control and there is a very, very high accuracy for children with autism. And this is regardless of whether they are high or low functioning autistics. The overgrowth of the front part of the brain by comparison to the back part of the brain is the distinguishing feature here. A normal child's brain will develop relatively evenly. The autistic brain will not. There is an increase in the volume of cortical gray matter reflecting a failure of synaptic pruning or possibly an excess of synaptogenesis, being the growth and development of synapses. This process involves a great many genes across all of the chromosomes and is very hard to describe in the limited time here. A further, and for this video, the final point of reference, is that low-functioning autism is characterized by a greater vulnerability for DNA methylation problems. This stems from a decreased capacity for methylation. These are only a few of the genes that are responsible in low-functioning autism. It is worth stating that many of the same genes found in high-functioning autism also appear in the diagnoses of low-functioning autistic groups. These same genes are in a different constellation of genes and environments, and this leads to very different outcomes based on the population being examined. There is a very interesting article in which Italian autistic children were examined and found to have an entirely different set, an almost exclusive set, of genes activated and deactivated by comparison to United States of American children who are diagnosed with autism. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it has been of some help to you, and please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you may have below.